yield five minutes to Representative Houlihan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I feel that the conversation that we're having right now by its literal very nature and its words is divisive and politicizing of the military. And I feel as though it's one of the reasons why, not the reason why recruiting may be seeing a SAG is that people don't see themselves in the military. They don't see their nation in the military. And I'm embarrassed by the tone and tenor of this conversation. It does not reflect the uh, dignity of this body and it's not respectful of the people who are sitting in front of us today. My questions do have to do with my own personal experience having served as a woman in the military in the late 80s and the early 90s and about the progress that we're making with 51% of the population who really do have the interest and the will of serving are all volunteer military, but we have some work to do in this area and so I'd like to ask you some questions about that. The ceiling on the percentage of women allowed to serve in the military was repealed in 1967. Women continued, however, to be pro prohibited from serving in many positions by statute and by policy, particularly those occupations that were related directly to combat arms specialties. In 1993, all laws prohibiting females from serving in any occupation were repealed. However, by policy, women were still excluded from serving in units or occupations involving in direct combat. It took another 22 years until December of 2015 for all combat jobs to be open to women with no waivers and with no exceptions. So my question is first to you, uh, Under Secretary Cisneros, but really for any of you all. In the years since that, we have learned a lot about the full inclusion of women in the military. Does the current DOD training and policy increase the opportunity for women to fully participate and serve, including in combat roles? And do you believe that the addition of this giant demographic of 51% of our population has enhanced our readiness? Representative Houlihan, to answer your question right there at the, the, the last one first is yes, um, they do enhance our readiness. And I think women are uh, an integral part of our military service today that serve in the military. Um, they're nearly 20% of the force. Um, we know that in order to, to, to improve and, and to uh, increase our, our force that we need to be uh, we need to be more inclusive of women joining the force and we know that we need to do a better job of ensuring that they stay around so that they can move up the ranks. And if there's a way, given that you gave me the exact statistic that I hold as well, which is that women do make up about 20% of the officer corps right now, but they are unfortunately less than 10% of our highest leadership positions. And here is likely why. My argument would be to you and to, to this, this committee here that a true meritocracy is not possible right now. And as much as I value a meritocracy, as many of us do, it is not possible when the military personnel system does not typically allow for lateral entry and therefore the average general or flag officer has been in service for about 30 years which means that females who have been in the service for about 40 years do not likely have the qualifications or the ability to uh, to be able to be considered for these promotions because of these restrictions that existed while they were rising through the ranks uh, as a retired Air Force General Lester Lyles uh, who uh, chaired the military leadership diversity commission stated we know that the exclusion this exclusion hinders woman, women from promotion. They're not getting credit for being in combat arms, and that's important for their consideration for most senior flag ranks. So with my remaining minute and a half, Mr. Cisneros, can you talk about why, given in this context, focusing on retention of female service members is indeed important and critical to fulfill the services goals of promoting a diverse and inclusive leadership pol uh, policy, as is outlined by the DOD? Congresswoman, the data we have shows that um, women service members are, are outperforming their, their male counterparts as they move up the ranks. Um, but what we're also seeing is that they, are leaving, they leave um, more often than their male counterparts do. Um, that is something that we uh, found out when we conducted the sprints that we did uh, uh, last year. Uh, this is something that we need to continue to work on to solve. Um, I think Secretary Austin has, has done a... Uh, tremendous job of, of searching out and, and finding those qualified individuals. Uh, we have four within the, uh, well, within the, um, the Department of Defense, our, our, our transcom commander, our, our SOCOM commander, our, our vice uh, CNO, our all four-star, you know, GOFOs, general officers, flag officers. The uh, commandant of the uh, Coast Guard is a, 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 is a, a woman as well. Uh, but, you know, I by no means would tell you that we can't do better. We need to do better. And uh, I am committed to you that we will do better. 
Thank you. I know that there's so much more that I have to ask, and I have no time left. I yield back, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yield five minutes.